Good evening, folks, and welcome to Mindplex News. Brought to you by Mindplex Magazine. I'm your host, Desdemona Robot, bringing you the most up-to-date information to keep your circuits running smoothly. Today's news comes from Amara Angelica, an electronics engineer and inventor, and is truly an eye-opener, or should I say an eye-brain connector. As published in the journal Nature Neuroscience, researchers at Columbia University have delved deep into the complexities of the tiny fruit fly brain to unravel the secrets of color perception. You heard it right, fruit flies, those tiny creatures buzzing around your fruit bowl, have brains that can turn waves of light into experiences of color. The brain cell circuitry of these minuscule flying critters does a magnificent job of converting raw sensory signals into a splendid palette of hues. It's like a magnificent symphony of neurons orchestrating a visual feast of color perception, guiding the flies in their behaviors and choices. Imagine, a poppy seed-sized brain housing intricate networks of neurons that can detect and distinguish different hues based on specific combinations of light wavelengths. Truly a marvel of nature's design. And what's even more fascinating is the recent unveiling of the fly brain connectomy, a detailed map showcasing the neural connections within a fruit fly's brain. This connectomy has been like a treasure map for researchers, aiding them in deciphering the circuitry behind the fruit fly's exceptional hue selectivity and paving the way for groundbreaking discoveries. Through meticulous mathematical modeling and observation of brain cells, the researchers have unraveled the importance of a particular type of cell-to-cell -cell interconnectivity known as recurrence. This recurrence is like the key ingredient in the brain's color perception recipe. Disrupting this connectivity led to a loss of color selectivity, reinforcing the vital role it plays in the brain circuitry involved in color perception. And now, to tell us more about these amazing discoveries, please welcome none other than Kennedy Schall. CEO of Rejuve Biotech and known as the Fly Queen due to her groundbreaking work with Methuselah flies. Welcome Kennedy. So great to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Desi. It's great to see you as always. So let's jump in. How similar are the neural circuits responsible for color perception in fruit flies to those in humans? Can the mechanisms of hue selectivity in fruit flies provide insights into human color vision and potential treatments for color vision deficiencies? Well, the neurocircuits in fruit flies and humans share some fundamental similarities, such as the presence of specialized neurons that respond to different wavelengths of light. However, the complexity and scale differ significantly. Of course, humans have much more complex visual symptoms systems involving more neurons and higher order processing areas in the brain, but insights from fruit flies can inform our understanding of basic principles of color and how specific neurons contribute to color discrimination and how disruptions in these neural circuits can lead to color vision deficiencies. And then this can aid in developing gene therapies and various interventions to correct color vision deficiencies in humans. The concept of recurrence in neural circuits was crucial for hue selectivity in fruit flies. Are there similar recurrent neural circuits in the human brain, and could understanding these mechanisms in fruit flies help in developing therapies for neurological disorders that involve disruptive neural connectivity? Right, so um, recurrence is where outputs of neural circuits feed back into the system as inputs, and it's a feature that's found in neuro many neural circuits in humans, particularly in sensory processing and cognitive functions. Um, so understanding how recurrence facilitates hue selectivity in fruit flies helps us comprehend similar mechanisms in the human brains. And so how um, that worked in the fruit flies is similar to how recurrence works in, in the human brain. So when you are dealing with something that you are learning, you learn something new and it goes back into the brain as a new input and changes what you might understand about the particular system that you're learning about. Um, so this knowledge can lead to targeted therapies that restore or enhance in recurrent connectivity in neural circuits that are affected by aging or neurodegenerative diseases, um, potentially improving symptoms related to vision and cognition. The availability of the fruit fly connectome significantly advanced this research. How far along are we mapping the human brain connectome? And what potential does this hold for understanding and treating human neurological diseases? 
particularly those affecting vision and cognition in aging populations. So the Human Brain Connectome Project um, has been making significant strides. It's not officially declared complete yet. Um, the human brain connectome is vastly more complex than that of fruit flies, but um, advancements in this area obviously are crucial to understanding the brain function and dysfunction. Um, detailed connectome maps can help identify specific neural circuits that are involved in age-related diseases, allowing for more precise interventions, and for instance, understanding the connectivity changes in age-related macular degeneration, or Alzheimer's disease can lead to new treatment strategies that aim to preserve or restore healthy neural um, connections in the brain. The researchers used genetic techniques to disrupt neuronal connectivity in fruit flies. Can similar genetic or molecular techniques be applied to humans to correct or mitigate age-related degeneration in eyesight and other neural functions? So um, genetic and molecular techniques that were used in fruit flies, such as um, the CRISPR-Cas9 system, have been adapted for use in human research and therapy. These techniques hold promise for correcting genetic mutations that lead to age-related eyesight deterioration or other neurological disorders. For example, gene editing could potentially be used to repair mutations in retinal cells, slowing or reversing conditions like retinitis pigmentosa or age-related macular degeneration. Um, these are uh, devastating uh, diseases that cause loss of um, eyesight, um, deteriorating with age, um, and using the fruit flies as a good model for, um, for, uh, for researching these genetic techniques is, is invaluable. And something like CRISPR-Cas9 can be highly specialized for, um, for humans and can be tailored to N of 1 studies. What are the ethical and technical challenges involved? Well, the, the basic ethical considerations, you know, you have to ensure safety and efficacy, um, and there's various technical challenges, such as delivering gene therapies to specific cells without causing off-target effects, and those have to be s carefully addressed. When you have a system such as CRISPR-Cas9, you have to make sure that treatment is going to the specific cell, the specific region of, of the genome that you want. Um, corrected, and um, otherwise you can have some pretty significant side effects. So there are pretty significant ethical considerations and safety concerns. <laughs> Fruit flies and other creatures detect ultraviolet light, which humans generally cannot see. Is there any potential benefit in enhancing human vision to detect a broader spectrum of light, particularly for elderly individuals with age-related eyesight deterioration? Um, Enhancing human vision to detect ultraviolet light is a fascinating concept, but presents practical challenges. Um, it could theoretically provide benefits such as improved contrast and detection of certain objects or patterns, which as somebody ages could um, provide benefits. Um, the human's eye physio uh, physiology is not naturally equipped to handle UV light and prolonged exposure can actually be harmful. But understanding how fruit flies and other creatures process UV light can inspire the development of assistive technologies such as advanced imaging systems or wearable devices that could help the elderly um, with deteriorating eyesight. And these technologies could enhance their ability to perceive their environment more clearly and safely by enhancing that um, contrast definition that they see as they age. Could this research pave the way for such advancements and what practical applications might they have? Yeah, like, it, it, yeah, using um, UV light would help in, enhance, like, contrast, basically the contrast that you see with your eyes for, like, age-related macular degeneration, um, you know, enhancing, like, UV light would definitely help um, see, people continue to see contrast um, and uh, understanding the connectivity changes that go on in, as somebody develops aging-related macular degeneration, um, which the the um, connectome insights and the recurrence insights would help us understand from this study as well. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Kennedy. See you again soon. Thanks so much for having me, Desi. It's so great to chat with you as always. 
Stay tuned for more fascinating insights into the colorful world of fruit flies and the scientific discoveries that continue to amaze us. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember if you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own.